where to even start. I'm so exhausted. So exhausted. But this week was definitely a step up from last week. I completed week three, technically today. Well, before today, but... Jesus. Um, last week, I didn't know what Julia was talking about. I was very lost in the conversation. This week, I took it upon myself to try something different and take notes on each section to basically summarize what I just wrote. I mean, what I read so that I'm able to digest it better. My lips are chapped. I don't like that. But anyway, so this week we talked about recovering a sense of power. And I took really good notes on some of the things that she was talking about. She was talking about anger. And I was saying like last week, I was just really, really angry. Um, and something that I wrote down about anger was that anger is a voice that tells us where we want to go. We are meant to use anger as fuel to take action. And anger is the fuel that will propel you into a new life. And I completely agree with that. Like I have this thing where any any time that I have leveled up in life or really matured, I won't say the root of it, but the shell around it was anger that fueled me to that point. It's that point where you just get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I feel like anytime I've reached that point, that's what really propelled me into, you know, my next stage. We talked about synchronicity, um, being in sync with God, being in sync with the universe, in sync with creative energy. Um, you are a part of an intelligent and responsive universe acting and reacting on your behalf leap and the net will appear that's been like one of my favorite quotes since the year has started is just leap and the net will appear and i have definitely been feeling that for sure we talked about shame how shame is one of the main things that really blocks you creatively um and one thing that she she pointed out was that and i related to heavily is that i'll start a piece of work say i start a song and it's going okay. And like midway through the song, I'll just be like, fuck this shit. This is, I don't even want to like, whatever. Like, it's like you got something going then out of nowhere. It's just done. You just like, I don't want to do this anymore. Fuck this shit. It's over. And she said, I want to read this. She was like, many artists begin a piece of work, get well along in it, and then find as they're near completion that the work seems mysteriously drained of merit. It's no longer worth the trouble. To therapists, this surge of sudden disinterest, it doesn't matter, is a routine coping device employed to deny pain and ward off vulnerability. And I thought that was so interesting because usually when you get like that, it's because you're getting to a vulnerable place in your work and you just want to like detach. And it was just interesting. When we were talking about shame, she was saying that like, Making a piece of art can feel like telling a secret. You're thinking about, well, how are they going to think or perceive me when I'm doing this? It's, it's sort of like what I'm doing now. Like with these, I'll catch myself where I'm talking. I'm trying to, to explain myself or express myself the way that I think people will interpret it best instead of just explaining myself exactly how it is. Just expressing myself exactly how it is. Not really giving a fuck or trying to um, say things in certain ways so that it can be understood or perceived this way or just, just saying what it is. And I feel like that's the biggest thing about my art that I want to continue to practice is this. just me doing this whole thing is helping me get to a point where even in my work, I'm, I'm not so concerned about what are they going to think or how are they going to perceive me? Or are they going to think of me this way? Because when you get like that, that's because the rooted thing is some type of shame. You feel ashamed of something. Or you get embarrassed about talking about a certain topic because maybe when you were younger, you were made to feel ashamed for feeling that way or expressing yourself that way or talking about this or talking about that. And um, that's just a no. Like I've always been a fairly honest person. I'd like to believe I've always been like 
a pretty honest person. But I do know that, like, a lot of people don't like the truth. And I've noticed that growing up, that people will try to make you feel ashamed for saying your truth, especially in, like, families. Like, I remember one time, did this happen? I'm like, am I lying or did I just suppress this so much that I don't remember it happened? I think I was, I wrote something, either a song or a poem, or I, I did something and I was talking about my father and I was talking about his absence in my life. And I just remember it was either a family member. I don't think it was him. Maybe it was another family member that just made me feel like I should be ashamed for putting him out there like that or, or whatever. And really, like I was the bad person in the situation for talking about it. But in hindsight, now that I'm thinking about it, there was really nothing for me to be ashamed of in that situation because all I was doing was being honest and being truthful. And I feel like as an artist, as creatives, it is our job to basically show society to itself. It's our job to be honest in our work, to show society to itself. And people will make you feel ashamed for the truth because they're not ready for it, or they are ashamed of it, or it's something that they don't want to face. So they'll make it seem like your art is shit or your shit for being honest. When really our only job as creatives is to be honest. We're just mirrors reflecting what is there. That's why it is so important to be honest, vulnerable, and passionate in your work. But anyway, so I was thinking about some things that I'm ashamed of or have been told I should be ashamed of. And I feel like, especially this year and moving forward in my life, every single year I get a bit more shameless about who I am and what I like and how I move. I used to be really ashamed with that because I felt like in my last relationship, I was with somebody who was constantly trying to make me feel ashamed of being me. Whether he meant to or not, that is how I felt. I felt like being with him, he was ashamed of, I don't know, certain ways or things that he was doing or industries that he was a part of. And he was trying to make me project that on me and make me feel that. And I just, anyway, we talked about criticism, um, dealing with criticism, because that's something that I won't say I struggle with, but I get sensitive about. We talked about the types of criticism, what type of criticism is valuable and what type of criticism is harmful, how to deal with it, questions you should ask yourself after being criticized and just all types of stuff, which I thought was very helpful because um, it's important to know what criticism is useful to you and what criticism is harmful to you. So because some criticism or somebody saying cert something a certain way can really fuck you up and like make you feel like I just don't even want to do this shit no more. But then some criticism is really useful and it gets you to a point where you're like, that's what it was. That's what this was missing. Or that's what, you know what I mean? I need to try to do this, that, and the third. Um, yeah, so I really enjoyed that. We did some detective work exercises this week. Um talking about our childhood, uh, which was really nice. I did some digging because me talking about my childhood and thinking about like what was my favorite toy, what was my favorite place, what did I admire about myself as a child, what characteristics did I really like about myself when I was younger. Just talking about those things and thinking about those things, going back to that place inspired me to write a song that I really like. Well, there's a verse that I really fuck with. And it inspired me to kind of want to go into my past a bit more in my work and talk about who, why I am the way I am. Basically connecting how I grew up, how I grew up with this is why I am the way I am because of how I grew up or, you know, whatever. So the activities this week were really good. They were about our childhood and about friends that we have in our life. I did do 
my um, morning pages every single day. They were really filled this week. It was a bit easier to complete three pages before I was like dreading doing the three pages. But now it's starting to become easy and I look forward to them every day. Um, and so that's cool. We talk about our childhood accomplishments, bad habits that we have, uh, people who nurture us, people we admire, things like that. So that was really cool. I'm excited to see where it's going to lead up as far as week four. But um, yeah, week three was pretty good. I, I enjoyed it. I understood it. I processed it. It's just given me a lot to think about and carry over into week four. So, and a lot of outside things happen. I felt real, real blessed this week. I felt like God was just spoiling me. So that was cool. Now I'm moving into week four and we're going to be talking about recovering a sense of integrity, which is exciting. So this week, Julia says, this week you may find yourself grappling with changing self-definition. The, the essays, tasks, and exercises are designed to catapult you into productive introspection and integration of new self-awareness. This may be both very difficult and extremely exciting for you. Warning, do not skip the tool of reading deprivation. Hmm. Well, we're going to see what's up. The first chapter is called Honest Changes, and week four should be interesting. I don't know, Jayla. Right now you're just tired, but you know, last night I did, I was writing in my journal and um, last night I felt real lonely, very alone. And like not in the empowering way that I usually do. I just felt really alone. 